And I know you've practiced it and practiced it, but that practice paid off today. What a beautiful, what a beautiful job singing uh, to the Lord today. And uh, goodness, couldn't have been any better. Let's take our Bibles today. Matthew's Gospel. And uh, we're glad you're here. We're so thankful for families that have gathered together, folks that have come to be with their loved ones, and folks that have come with the hope and the assurance of knowing one day they'll get to be again with their loved ones because that Jesus Christ rose from the grave. It's good to have Mike and Mary Ann here today. I appreciate them and uh, friends for friends for generation. And I want Brother Mike Johnson, if he would, to lead us in prayer before we look at the Scripture in Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 28 today. Brother Mike, would you lead us to prayer today? Lord, we bless you. We thank you. We need your touch. Help us. Oh, Lord. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Thank you again for being here. Appreciate the prayer, Brother Mike. We appreciate you and Marianne being here with your family on Easter. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 28. By the way, before I forget, we want to remind you, we, we do not have service here this evening. And uh, we, we never do on Easter Sunday night. It'll be March 31st next year. So that gives you the whole afternoon, and I would love to see families come together here. I know folks stay home to get lunch ready, but we've got the rest of the day. Uh, this is something we don't get to do very often, worship together with our families. And I encourage you to come to Easter Sunday services, and we give the whole entirety of the rest of the day so that we have time to where we can spend that time with family away from here. But my, my. What a joy it is to gather together and worship together. Remind you, we'll be back Wednesday at 12 noon. Be praying in our parking lot as we do every Wednesday, praying for our neighbors, for our community. Thank you for helping us, those that do. We invite you to be with us then. Then Wednesday night, we'll be back for our meal and our study of the Word of God, our children's classes, Friday night, the RU meets. And we'll get back into our regular schedule next Sunday uh, morning and evening again. So we invite you to be here then. And uh, we did not receive an offering today. Because we don't receive offerings. We have been blessed by people just like you who have been so faithful that on the Lord's day they bring as God's commanded what they need to bring to give to the Lord uh, of, their, of their tithes and offerings. We have a box right outside the door and we have a, a plate right over here. And for over three years God's people have been faithful to not just say, well, if they don't pass the plate, I don't have to buy a ticket. But folks can do what's right with the Lord with what God has done for them and thank you. I just commend you in that for how you're faithful to do that. And so that's why we don't pass that plate uh, every service. But the need is there. The obligation is there. And may God, we're just trusting and thanking the Lord for those that, that follow that scripture. The Bible says in Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 28, we want to read the first ten verses, if we could. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene. And the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. And his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. <laughs> As you've already said it in the service once today, let's all say it together again in verse number 6. He is not here, for He is risen, as He said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly. And tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. And there shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy. And did run to bring his disciples word. 
And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. And then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Ten verses of Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 28. I told you earlier, my hope today, we have sung it, we have shared it, we have testified of it, the Lord is not dead. Amen. He is not dead. I did something yesterday, there's a big debate over AI in our world today. Is it going to take over everything? Is it doing this? Is it doing that? It's amazing if you ride down the street corner, you'll see a, you'll see a sign that says, just right on the street corner, says increase your business, build up your business, uh, uh, call this number and, and so and so, AIG whatever will help you advertise your business better. But they did a survey. Somebody got some whatever AI is and they asked AI some questions about Easter. And they asked AI, artificial intelligence, I, still don't, I just still say just unplug it or don't charge the battery. And we won't have to worry about it. But uh, I, anyway, evidently that's not, that's not how it works. But they asked AI, did Jesus Christ really live? Now, I'm just here to tell you, you know this and I know this. We got a Bible. We don't need a computer to tell us if Jesus lived. But AI is not supposedly guided by emotions or tradition, or even history. And AI said, yes, there is reasonable proof. It is, a, it is a given fact that Jesus Christ lived on the earth. They said, did Jesus Christ die on a cross? And again, AI said, well, there's enough intelligence, there's enough evidence, there's enough facts recorded in the world that yes, it can be, it can be deduced that Jesus Christ died on the cross. And so the next question was, did Jesus Christ rise from the grave? And it's not artificial intelligence. <laughs> because then man took over. <laughs> and man said, well, that's up to individual interpretation and different people's faith, faith patterns or faith values. And it went into all that. And then it even asked AI, I said, well, can man go to heaven without believing in Jesus? And again, AI fudged and gave the politically correct answer. And I thought, that ain't AI, that's just politics. And said, well, that's just up to individual people to come to their own. I want to tell you today, you don't need artificial intelligence. <laughs> we have the scripture. But what you really need <laughs> is the Holy Ghost to come by and let you know, yes, Jesus lived. Yes, Jesus died. And hallelujah, yes, Jesus rose again. And one more thing you need to know, you need Jesus to go to heaven. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and you can call that whatever you want today, that's biblical intelligence, amen. That's Holy Ghost conviction. But, the, but the, all these people, we mentioned it earlier, they, they, they should have, you thought they would have, and this is why you have a chance today. You say, preacher, I can't listen to me today. You have the same opportunity because these people did not believe in Jesus Christ's resurrection uh, 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 because they had been around Him and because they were friends with Him and because they grew up where He grew up and because they lived where He lived. They believed in Jesus Christ because the Lord Jesus, my friend, uh, dealt with their heart. And they believed by faith. Yes, some of them did see. But until that moment, they were simply that close and yet they didn't know. They saw him die. They heard his teaching. They even said they forgot that he had said something about dying and raising again. And they had not got a hold of that yet. Some of you today are just like them. You've heard about it, but you hadn't got a hold of it yet. You know why you hadn't got a hold of it? Because he hadn't got a hold of you. But when he gets a hold of you, you'll get a hold of it. When he gets a hold of you, you'll get a hold of it. 
And so here they were. They, these, these women had watched him die. They had heard if anybody loved him. And there's nobody that could have loved him on earth any more than these women did. They followed him. They, they were there. They, they were there when they rolled the stone in place. But I love this story. I, lo- I, 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 I love what love will let you do. They loved him so much that they went home and gathered the spices and made preparation even though they saw the stone rolled there. And they didn't say, well, there's no sense in getting any spices till we figure out how we're going to get the stone. They did what they could. Got ready to do all they could get ready to do. And then they just had to wait and see. We don't know how the stone's going to get moved, but let's do our part. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? They said, hey, they didn't say, well, you, hey, hey, Mary, call me. Send up a smoke signal and let me know if they get the stone moved. And if they get the stone moved, then I'll get the spices out and we'll go down and we'll anoint Jesus' body. No. They had determined in their heart, we're going to do what we can do. We're going to get ready as best we can and we're going to go down there. But if they did, there was, then, they, then on the way they said, well, who's going to move the stone? <laughs> Just do what God's put on your heart to do and let God do what you can't do. Amen? So they loved Him. They loved Him so much they were there at the very... I mean, they were literally there when they nailed the coffin shut. They were literally there. And they left. And they had, the, they had their religion they had to abide by. And they had to wait. But while they were waiting, they had opportunity and they got the spices and they got ready and they go and they say, and they're there early as soon as, the, as soon as it began to dawn. And as soon as it went from being the Sabbath, they headed that way and then they said, who's going to move the stone? And they get there and guess what had already happened? The stone was moved. And we all know this. We've heard it. And we, that stone wasn't moved to let them in. Uh, the stone wasn't moved to let Jesus out. Christ was already out. Uh, the stone was moved so they could see in. But they get there. These women loved Him. And yet, they still thought He was dead. Yeah. Say, preacher, it's hard to, it is hard to believe in a risen Savior. But that's the wonderful joy of faith. We believe what we haven't seen. And that's how God deals with our heart. Through His grace, we, we believe what we can't see. We walk by faith. We're saved by faith. We serve by faith. We sing by faith, my friend. He is Lord. He's risen from the dead. And He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Say, preacher, I'll do it when I see Him. You better do it for then. You better do it for then. You see, the Bible teaches us that if you wait until you see Him, it will be too late. It will be too late. That's how important it is for you to yield when that Holy Ghost deals with your heart. That's how important it is for you to submit when He draws you to Him. But they went and they said, and so I want you to see quickly, I, 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 you, you'll be surprised how, how, uh, how, how, how short I keep you. Watch this. They went and an angel. I want you to get all this story. <laughs> They're going to mess you up right, right away. There's such things as angels. Amen? There are real angels. You need to get a hold of this today. Not this fairy tale stuff on the internet. There are real angels. And, 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 and God didn't call you to, uh, to worship any of them. Or to pray to any of them. But my friend, when God sends an angel, you might well shake a little bit. The Bible said when that angel came, those guards, those Roman guards, and you know those weren't the, the wimpy ones. They were put there to guard the tomb of, of this man who they hated and despised. And they didn't just put anybody out there. And these Roman soldiers, when they saw the angel, the Bible said they feared and they fell like they were dead. Were they dead? I don't know. But that's just one angel. <laughs> that's just one angel. Came and moved the stone. But it wasn't just that angel's power. That, what does the word angel mean? Messenger. Messenger. That angel had an Easter message. <laughs> he is not here. I know who you're looking for. 
I know who you're looking for. That could be said of the world today. I know who you're looking for. Well, don't start looking at the tomb. He's not there. Don't start looking at the grave. Understand this. Don't, don't get this. In case you're not much familiar with all this young people, don't get this wrong. That'd be just like going to the graveyard. If you walk through the woods right there, there's a graveyard there. When we say Jesus wasn't in the tomb, we're not talking about a cave where somebody could go hide. We're talking about a tomb where you put dead bodies. They just didn't have the ability to dig through the rock. So they tunneled into the rock and put their graves in the rock. They couldn't dig down. It was just rock. So they didn't dig a grave like we're used to. But when I say He's not at the tomb, I'm saying He's not at the grave. He's not in the hole that they put dead bodies in. He's not there. The angel had a message. He is not here. Okay, if He's not here, where is He? He is risen. He's risen. Why does that matter? Why do y'all keep harping on that? Why does that matter? Because it matters. It matters. If Christ be not raised, we're still in our sins. You say, Preacher, oh no, I've got lots of options. Yeah, if He's not raised, it's okay. I've got another plan. <laughs> I love my little Lucy. I love my little Lucy. They, they, some people think she's my favorite. I, I don't say that, but I love my little Lucy. But I, love, I was trying, Grandpa was trying to coach her in soccer one day. And uh, I was telling her, I said, now, honey, I said, you got to understand, you, you got to be thinking ahead. I said, you got to have a, you got to, I said, what I'm trying to help you is that you got a plan. So when that ball comes this way, you got a plan, you know what you're going to do. This is my little girl, it's about two, three years ago, she said. She said, I got a plan, it's right here. That's how a lot of people think they are when they're going to meet the Lord. They've got a plan right here. They've thought up something they think is really smart. They think they're the only ones that ever thought of it. The Bible said if Christ be not risen, we're yet in our sins. I know who you're looking for. But He's not here. So what does that matter, preacher? It matters because if He didn't get out of the grave, we don't have a sacrifice. We're yet in our sins. And even worse, we've been telling lies. For 2,000 years, the Christian church has been telling people that they can be okay with Christ because of what He did on the cross and He rose again for our justification. He said, we're false witnesses. It's not just that we're still in our sin. We've been lying. So it matters. Boys and girls, young ladies, young men, it matters. It matters. It's not just a, well, it's okay if you don't believe, if you do believe. Yes, it's not okay. If you don't believe, you're in a mess. And God wants you to believe because that's how He has a relationship with us. That's how He has fellowship with us. That's how He has communion with us. You think He's going to send His Son to die for our sins, us stop and trample on that blood, and then Him say, oh, come sit down, I want to talk to you. It wouldn't make sense. It, it wouldn't make sense in human realm. I'm telling you, it matters. The Bible said, I read to you, 1 Corinthians 15, said we're yet in our sins. And it matters not just for our transgressions and our sins and our trespasses and our iniquities. It matters because we'll never see our loved ones again. Because the Bible said they have perished. You see, my... My daddy died, but he didn't perish. My, my friend Mike Cleghorn died, but he didn't perish. Your mama Irene died, but she didn't perish. Jerry Emerson died, but he didn't perish. The Bible said if Christ didn't get up again, our loved ones are perished. You know where that word perish comes from? John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. Watch this. Because a lot of people miss it. He didn't say that our loved ones wouldn't die. He didn't say that believing in Jesus would, would keep you from dying. Believing in Jesus will keep you from perishing. There is a difference between dying 
and perishing. Hallelujah. Dying means you have a hope, my friend, of a resurrection. Perish means you died without hope. Dying, my friend, is horrible. It's, it'll, it'll just change your entire world. It'll change a man's countenance. It'll change the home. It'll change a marriage. It'll change a family when death comes. And we've seen it do that. But it only changes this world. Perishing changes eternity. Perishing changes eternity. And Jesus, or Paul said, if, if, if Christ is not risen, then we're still in our sins. And we're going to perish. And our loved ones have already perished. But when that angel said, He's not here. <laughs> He's risen. He gave us the greatest news He could give us that day. <laughs> you say, well, preacher, no, the better news would have been if the angel would have said, He never died in the first place. No, that wouldn't have been better news. That wouldn't have been better news. <laughs> this crowd has got it explained away by he swooned. And he, and he just, he just kind of fainted. And, and when they put him in on that cold rock, he revived, my friend. There's no hope in that. I still don't have a sacrifice. So that angel didn't say, the angel said, you seek Jesus who was crucified. Crucified. No. I don't seek a Jesus who didn't die for me. My Savior had to die for me. Because if He didn't die for me, my death is not going to be enough. But He died for my sins, according to the Scriptures. I, I, I just want to, I want to celebrate today. He is not here. I just want you to know, when, when it comes to He is not, He is not here. He is not a victim. He is not dead. He is not a martyr. He's not been defeated. He's not been abandoned. He is not a criminal. He's not locked up in that tomb. He's not silent. He's not decayed. He is not, my friend, just an opiate for the people. My friend, He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is not in that grave. And you say, preacher, why does it matter? I'm trying to tell you why it matters. It is the linchpin of our faith. The gospel. Paul said, I declared unto you the gospel. The death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he called it the gospel. You know what the word gospel means? Young ladies, young men, good news. I say, preacher, that's what I never have gotten out of all that. How do y'all make that Easter, that Easter horror into good news? Because God loved us so much that He hath laid upon Him the iniquity of us all. It pleased God to bruise Him. We looked at Him and we thought He got what He deserved. That's what Isaiah said. Isaiah said we esteemed Him, we esteemed him stricken and smitten of God. And exactly that's what the Jews said when they watched Christ. They said, He's just getting what He deserves. No, He was getting what we deserved. <laughs> That's good news. That's good news. Young people, I've got good news for you today. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. I've got good news for you. He was buried. He was dead. But i got good news. He didn't stay dead. On the third day, He rose. He rose. Jesus said to Mary <laughs> at the tomb of her brother when death had visited that family and she said, Lord, if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died. You're late. You, you, you could have stopped. And he said, oh Mary, you don't understand. The reason I didn't come for four days is because you just think I can work on this side of death. You think I have to do all my work on this side of death. You think I have to do all my work before you call the coroner, before you call the medical examiner, before you call the undertaker. Mary, you think I, I, I've only got power on this side of the grave. <laughs> well, 
Well, that'd be great. I mean, that's power. But hallelujah, guess what? He said, Mary, <laughs> I've got power on the other side of the grave. Get a hold of that, boys and girls. I've got power on the other side of the grave. <laughs> hey, medicine might help you on this side of the grave, <laughs> but medicine ain't going to help you on the other side of the grave. I've seen them bury folks with a lot of things, but I've never seen them bury them with a bottle of pills. It ain't going to do you no good on the other side of the grave. But thanks be unto God. Jesus said to Martha and to Mary that day, he said to Mary, he said, Honey, you, I, know, I know you think I'm late, but you have to know that, that I, my power doesn't stop right here at the grave. My power doesn't stop here at the door of the tomb. I don't have to work. I'm not bound by getting my work done before death comes. Because over here on the other side, I am the resurrection and the life. <laughs> Believest thou this? I'm just going to ask you as you stand today, what have you believed about Jesus? I'm just going to ask you, say it's Easter preacher, you should have gave a clear presentation of the gospel. God loves you. Your sins have separated you. They've separated me from God. We have all sinned, T.J., Gave it clear as a bell. We have all sinned and come short. Our sins have caused us a separation from God. And that separation will lead us to perishing. Not just dying. It's appointed unto man wants to die. We're all going to die. But it will lead us to perishing. Perishing means dying without Christ. Dying without God. Dying without hope. That's what perishing means. But God so loved the world He gave His only begotten Son Whosoever believeth in Him Should not perish You will read John 17 3, 17 and 18 He said for Christ didn't come to condemn the world He said the world was condemned already That's hard on Easter That's so hard on Easter Sunday morning We got up We're here with our family We're celebrating the season we, we, we've, we've contemplated all of what's called Holy Week. We, 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 we've read about it. We've gotten here. We're, we're ready for it. And, and, and how is it that we've all sinned and come short? How is it that, that that's not what you're looking for? It's not what I'm looking for. It's what the Lord is looking for. TJ told you about the Passover. And the Bible said that God Himself said this. When I see the blood I will pass over you it's not when you when you know about the blood when you have uh, when you take it and you you've seen the lamb die and you have lived where other people know about the blood and you have been a good little boy or girl no that's not what he said he said when I see the blood I will pass over you and it's the same thing today the Lord is still looking for the blood to be applied without the shedding of blood there is no remission there's no cleansing there's no forgiveness and what I ask you today do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that's called repenting first I'm going to read you these verses because I want you to hear these verses today and I'll be done Romans chapter number 10 Romans chapter number 10 you know the scripture but I want you to read them I want you to hear what verses they are so that maybe maybe later maybe when you're maybe there's somebody that can read them to you again maybe that you'll read them again but here's what your Bible says that if thou shalt confess remember a while ago I told you every knee shall bow every tongue confess some have the opportunity to do it now some have the opportunity to do it now by grace and mercy and the Holy Ghost are crawling and leading you. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Amen. And he even said in the next verse, for there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. 
I say to you today, there's no difference between you and the person sitting beside of you, between you and the person on the other side of the pew, on the other side of the church. You may have raised in church, never hardly missed a week. This may be your first time to ever come to a church. It matters not. There is no difference. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. That's the clearest presentation I can give. Have you called on Him? I know who you're looking for. You're looking for Jesus. But He's not here. He's risen. Go and tell others. Go and tell others. Go and tell others. Go and tell others. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. And we're still doing it 2,000 years later. He's alive. He's alive. And you know what happens while we're doing it? Every once in a while, He just comes right in the midst of us and says, All hail! And we fall and worship Him for a while. And after we worship Him, and my friend, then we get up and we go tell it. And we go tell it. And we go tell it. And you know what the angel said to tell him? He said, One day He'll meet you. (laughs) One day He'll meet you. I'm here to tell you today, one day, if you know Him, by salvation in Jesus Christ, one day you'll meet Him. The Bible calls it the rapture. The Bible doesn't call it the rapture. Men call it the rapture. The Bible calls it the catching away. But He's going to come. He's going to come. He's going to take us to be with Him. Oh, what a day we've got to look forward to. I'm just asking you one question today. Are you saved? Have you been born again? Are you saved? Say, preacher, I've never confessed. You need to confess. You need to confess. You need to believe with your heart. Confess with your mouth. You need to turn. I never thought I needed to be saved. That's a good way to turn. Now I see I do need to be saved. That's a, that's a, that's a turning. That's a changing of mind. That's a changing of a thought. That's a repenting. That's realizing, yes, I do need to be saved. That's a turning. You can't do that of yourself. It takes God. It takes the Lord. It takes the Holy Ghost to come. That's why boys and girls, moms and dads, grandparents and grandma, and teenagers and young adults, that's why they can do it. Because the Holy Ghost, Jesus said, no man comes unto me except my Father which sent me. Draw Him. He may be drawing you. He may be drawing you. He may be drawing you. Nothing happens if He don't draw. If He draws, oh honey, <laughs> I have to watch this. The Bible said, "Draw him." The Bible didn't say, "Drag him." Amen. The Bible said, "Draw him." The Bible didn't say, "Drag." You better pay attention to that little tug. You better pay attention. You, you, you. Oh my! The Lord loves you. It's Easter. What a joy. What a joy. He's not here. He is not. I'm glad my Bible's not just full of what He is not, but what He is. (laughs) He is risen from the dead. (laughs) He is risen. And if you keep following your Bible, you'll find Revelation 17 where the Bible said, He is King of kings and Lord of lords. I know my Bible said He is not. But my Bible also says He is. He is our peace. He is the mediator. He is the Lord of glory. He is the King of kings. And He loves you. And He loves you. And He loves you. And on Easter we celebrate that He is not. But He is. Hallelujah. Is He calling you today? Some could say He is. He is. He's dealing with my heart. I need to get this thing settled. I need to quit trusting religion and the church and family and tradition and Mama and Papa. I've got to get it settled between me and Jesus Christ. And why the Lord bids you come, why He draws you, you're waiting on Him to drag you. He's not going to do it. He's not going to drag you. Oh no, but He'll draw you. He'll draw you through your family that loves you, through the preacher, through a friend, through an instance in life, a situation, some, some tragedy, some success, somewhere along the way, He's just going to prick your heart. Draw you. Say, come on to me. I love you. I died for you. Confess me. Believe in me. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They're singing. I hope you're coming today. I hope Easter Sunday is the day you get saved. I hope this Easter Sunday is the day you get saved.